We've won equality. Why should gays continue to be singled out, even for the purpose of being celebrated? Being gay is an attribute, not an accomplishment. Nonetheless, American corporations must show the citizenry how progressive they are, and so taste the rainbow. What Megyn Kelly has done to woke culture has left Hollywood fuming. Her strong views against gender-affirming care, woke school programs, and even gender pronouns have sparked debates and made her a powerful voice for conservatives who feel the same way. Why I'm done with preferred pronouns. I was an early proponent of using preferred pronouns as far back as the early 2000s, of saying she when I knew the truth was he. It seemed harmless and I had no wish to cause offense. Megyn Kelly began by complying with the preferred pronouns. She thought that trans people were being tortured because society had a disdain for them. But Kelly was yet to see the true form of the woke agenda. When it showed its ugly face, she couldn't unsee it. I had the female runners on the show, along with a trans medical physicist who was also a former athlete to explain the advantages to trans athletes, especially post-puberty. When I slipped and said the trans girls were biological males, this person told me that was offensive. I explained that it was an attempt at clarity, but began to rethink the language policing. Why did I have to deny reality in order to be polite? What I said was true. And that's when the truth of woke movement dawned on her. If you say something they don't like but is true, you are an enemy. That was just the surface. The silent victims were the girls and women who worked so hard to be the best. But boys and men wearing makeup and using she-her pronouns snatched their victories. And girl after girl across this country soon faced the same problem. Competing against boys who claimed they were trans was dejecting and often near impossible. They were too strong, too big, too fast, too agile. From wingspan to femur length to lung capacity, heart size, and musculature, they had serious advantages, even with testosterone adjustment, which few competitions required in the first place. And the transitioning kids were also in problems. It's horrifying that we're letting kids as young as 10, 11, 12 undergo life-altering treatments like puberty blockers and hormone therapy. These are children who don't even know what they want for breakfast in the morning, let alone their gender. Kids telling teachers they were uncomfortable in their bodies were immediately affirmed as trans, despite the fact that upwards of 90% of kids will grow out of these feelings if only they are allowed to do so. Schools work to facilitate children's transition in the classroom, complete with name and wardrobe changes while implementing policies to keep it secret from the parents. The children had to be protected from those who loved them most. They clearly know what they're doing is not right if they have to hide it from the parents. Megyn Kelly affirms that biological males have physical advantages that make competition unfair to the females. And when their woke program harms children, they did more to cover it up. A boy in a dress sexually assaulting a girl in a Virginia school bathroom while administrators covered it up. A teenage volleyball player severely injured by a trans player who spiked the ball so hard the girl suffered permanent damage. Hospitals bragging about how much cash they were making on cross-gender procedures, including on teenagers. Pictures online of young women's gutted forearms where flesh was harvested to build a grotesque, phony phallus that no one would ever mistake for an actual male sex organ. And as things got worse, they couldn't cover up everything. Kids who transitioned faced the dark reality that their lives had been changed forever with terrible health complications. One by one, we met the detransitioners, those brave enough to admit their gender changes had been a mistake. Kids who were just unhappy, anxious, or perhaps on the autism spectrum had been rushed to transition by a system that seemed more about a political agenda than about addressing the patient's mental health. These voices were promptly ignored or shamed by the very same community that had love-bombed them to begin with. Megyn Kelly decided to put her foot down. The woke movement used children's psychological challenges to further a political agenda. They parade transitioning kids all over the media, but when they detransition, they silence them. But children should not be subjected to these dangerous interventions in school or at the hands of so-called medical professionals. The facilities that allow it must be stopped or shut down. Megyn Kelly also has a problem with woke beauty standards. If woke culture is not telling women to get Brazilian butt lifts, it is promoting cosmetic surgery. She commented on the beauty standards of Ulta Beauty. Last month, Ulta launched a new video series on their YouTube and social media accounts called The Beauty Of. The first episode is called The Beauty Of Fatness and features Virgie Tovar, who Ulta describes as an author, activist, and expert in 
weight-based discrimination. No one has to be healthy. Tea. No, right? Like, Tea. I mean, it's like, no, like there is no governing body Tea. that's like out there putting, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, there are woke people who have died with overweight complications while trying to prove that being fat is not unhealthy. But there is more. You don't have to be healthy, but we don't have to celebrate somebody who is morbidly obese as healthy. That's a lie. This goes on for 33 minutes, these two. One commentator, Crystal, writes in, I was obese and 300 pounds. I was always in pain. I was slowly killing myself with food and not moving enough. And critiqued the whole beauty movement, saying, y'all are playing with your lives. The customers did not fall for the woke deception. People really do want to live long, healthy lives. When that didn't work, Ulta was already pushing another woke agenda. When Ulta tweeted the preview of this with the sentence, trans girls can do it all, and said the episode featured David and Dylan talking all things girlhood, Ulta's 600,000 followers had a big issue with the framing. Maggie tweeted, those are two adults. It's very creepy to hear them talking about girlhood when neither has ever experienced it. Ulta shut down those follower comments by saying they believe that beauty has no boundaries. In Megyn Kelly's view, gender is not something that can be changed based on feelings or identity. It doesn't make sense because it isn't true. And we know it's not true. And to pretend that it is true is to foster a lie that is hurting too many people, almost all of them girls, women and girls. They say pronouns are a gateway drug. They open the door to these lies that lead to real harm to real females. They are a clever rhetorical trick that forces you to see the argument about women's spaces before you've ever even spoken one word of substance. The beauty industry is not the only one that has woke ideas. There are now woke school programs to hook the impressionable minds of children. There's something called woke kindergarten going on here in America. And it's an actual federal program that states or cities are paying to bring into their kindergartens. Megyn Kelly takes issue with how woke culture has influenced school curriculums. She often refers to this shift in education as a woke agenda aimed at brainwashing children. Kindergarten program. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's this program that has a consultant come into your school and radicalize your children, the, the kindergarten children. Instead of focusing on reading, writing, and math, we've got kids learning about gender fluidity in kindergarten. To Megyn Kelly, that's not education, it's indoctrination. And if you doubt it, listen to this. They offer the woke word of the day, including strike, ceasefire, and protest, offering students a language of the resistance to introduce them to liberatory vocabulary, lil comrade convos, or positing a world for the children to consider without police, money, or landlords. To Kelly, these programs are taking away from essential academic skills and are exposing children to ideas they may not be mature enough to handle. And this is just the beginning. Spending $250,000 in federal money for this organization called Woke Kindergarten. They're training teachers, ready Sage, to confront white supremacy, disrupt racism and oppression, and to remove those barriers to learning.